Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I've got here an issue that's ongoing. Some of you have probably gone through this yourselves. It's the 3.5, sorry, 3.3 volt pin issue. Essentially with these modern drives, you can encounter an issue where if the 3.3 volt pin is activated, it goes into power saving mode. This shouldn't be an issue, but for the sake of regulators trying to enforce uh, greener incentives um, or green greener initiatives, they have activated this for newer drives and it's not an issue for newer power supplies. However, even though I have bought a, res a relatively recent power supply, I'm still having this issue. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix it uh, in a relatively comprehensive way. You can use just about any tape, but I'm going to be very specific in this example, just so people know how to do it properly. Um, I have seen what to me looks like a horror story of uh, people on Reddit, you know, scraping off the 3.3 volt pin, um, as in like literally pulling it off from the, the PCB here. Not ideal. Um, and then, of course, there are other situations in between doing it properly and, you know, just pulling off the pin. Uh, like uh, putting an intermediary. So something that can fix this is that Molex doesn't have a 3.3 volt output. So a lot of people, some people have recommended converting from Molex to SATA power. However, this isn't ideal because Molex to SATA power connectors have been known for causing fires. Uh, this is mostly because of the pinout. When it comes to the uh, injection molded Molex connectors, so I'm just going to show you how to do this properly. This is a uh, properly, in my opinion. Uh, I will say you should get yourself some capped on tape. This is good stuff. Uh, it's designed for high temperatures, designed to be used as a non-conductive layer inside electronics. So get yourself some capped on tape. And then you're going to realize that capped on tape is pretty fidgety to work with. You, if you, for example, if you were to use your finger to peel it up, you would leave fingerprints, it would become less sticky in that area. When it comes to cutting it, it'll slip in between the blades of the scissors. So it becomes difficult. So what I recommend is find yourself a worktop like this. This is this is glass. Um, something that you're not worried about scratching up a little bit. Um, get yourself some capped on tape. Get yourself a metal ruler. Um, box cutters that are relatively sharp and tweezers. What I like to do is I'll take the capped on tape and you only really need to do this once. Um, I would say once you have it on and done properly, don't mess with it. Um, so I'd say peel off a portion of capped on tape, uh, like so, maybe a little bit gentler so you don't mess with the adhesive because it is remarkably thin. Um, place it on the glass surface. Um, not exactly as I'm doing. Um, this is just for the sake of showing you guys an example. Get your box cutter, make sure your ruler is perpendicular to the tape, and score it. You should be able to feel the separation between the two layers of Kapton, or sorry, the two segments of tape, and I can pull this off quite easily. Now we have a relatively unscathed segment of Kapton tape there. I'm going to pan this camera down ever so slightly. Okay, then we can take this ruler and the thing to keep in mind is the separation for the 3.3 volt pin. So you should be able to see it here. If I can bring it for a close up. It is the third pin from the right when it comes to the SATA power connector. Um, and to give you an example of ones that I've done earlier, here they are. Now the other pins to the right, uh, so the first, second, and third pin from the right, they essentially do nothing. You're fine to cover those. Uh, I like to 
put some uh, Kapton tape on the drives in this fashion because when it comes to seating and unseating the SATA power connector, you you sell a tape and it'll eventually tear. You use electrical tape and it'll turn to mush because of the heating and cooling cycles inside the computer. Um, capped on tape is thin enough and it has a strong enough tensile strength that it'll last inside the computer. So let's go on with this. You only need about three or so millimeters of separation between each one. So you just give yourself some room, make sure it's sealed down. Um, I like to cut off the, the first portion that was peeled up by my finger. And take that away. Okay. And then I leave three millimeters of room for the next one. You can really feel it. You might want to go for a second pass just to be sure. And very easily again, you should be able to feel it. Now the thing is, when it comes to covering these connectors, sorry for bumping the camera, the depth of the connector isn't that much. So in terms of length for the segments that we're cutting here, we don't really want that much. We want about a centimeter worth. And this is where the tweezers come in and uh, a pretty short, sorry, a pretty thin flathead. So we can easily peel this up, bring over our hard drive and with some movie magic. So I have it in the first phase, which is where the capped on center point is pretty much right on the ridge of the SATA power connector. From here, it's not too difficult. Just make sure it's perpendicular to the connector so you don't have to do any unpeeling and rotating. And then simply slide this surface down, come over, and then back down. Now, that should be fine for the le rest of the drives lifetime. Um, drives that I've done this to, I've run for 10 or more years. Um, eventually, if you plug and unplug these drives, for example, into a uh, backplane or something like that, you may have to redo it, but I've had drives working in my NAS for, let's say, five years or so. Hasn't been an issue. Not when done properly like this. So save yourself some effort. Play the long game. Get yourself some Kapton tape. Put just a few minutes of work into it, and you won't have to repeat this again.